My job was not to get money from the people. My job as a minister was to get money to the people. For the last 50 years, Brother John Avanzini has been bringing the revelation of biblical economics around the globe. But prosperity has to do with what has you. He has written over 50 books, helping people to understand and apply principles of kingdom wealth in their finances. From the very beginning, the first thing he puts is this seed. Everything duplicates, mm. everything duplicates. Mm. A harvest never occurs without a man involved. When I walked into that room and heard the preaching and saw the move of the Holy Ghost, I realized that I did not have that. And so it drove me to my knees in my room, just mm. drove, man, I say drove me almost bluntly into the floor when I walked in the door and just, God, I must have what these men have. Mm. I saw a light coming and all of a sudden the voice of God spoke to me out of that light and said, I'm going to give you a message mm. to the world on my plan for their finances. Because every time you put your money in that plate, Come on. you've laid yeah. down part of your life because yeah. you had to give your life to get that money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the money is such a spiritual thing. Mm. People's faith decide how long something's going to take. Yeah. You, wow. You, wow. You, you, you. Welcome to Discussions with Brother John. We're so glad you guys are tuning in. And uh, one of my, the fathers in the faith, someone who's impacted my life, we've known each other, I think, 30 over years now. 30 years. I met you first in the 1990s, read many of your books when I was in Bible college. And it was at a conference and you preached and I was uncomfortable. <laughs> and uh, heard the message uh, of seed time and harvest, heard the message of, of uh, giving in faith and stepping out of just tithing level, but believing God for the supernatural and uh, was a part of the Singapore church, City Harvest Church there. Yes. We would come every year and we just had a moves of God. We were talking just now as we started of just amazing things uh, that God done. So thank you for sowing to my life and so many other uh, life. You're 86 years young. Yes. Sir. And uh, we're here in Orange County and, and it's such a privilege to have you in our church for the first time and a father in the faith here. I know we're going to have a great weekend and thought we could be good just to sit down and uh, have some conversations. And uh, God's brought you on a journey. You've been in ministry more than 60 years and uh, been all over the world and uh, helped to, to really uh, be an apostle of, of this message and teaching this message, setting people free into the, the blessing and the liberty that God has for them. So thank you for being here with us. And uh, I thought we could just start out and kind of tell your story. I know you were a Baptist preacher here in San Diego. Yeah, sure. And uh, you had an encounter with God in Nigeria that just revolutionized um, your ministry. Yes, and, and, and God gave you a message and began to do something that went all around the world. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because sometimes, you know, we have people out there and I know as a young preacher, we're, we're listening to other preachers and taking their messages and trying to preach it. And we all do that until we make it our own. But really, you had an encounter with God, I believe. Yes. You know, I want to start first by saying that at the end of this time, the 10 years we've been separate, to see you still strong in the Lord and that you have committed your life to him, that you've stayed. And now you have started this wonderful work here. I thank God for those that stay. Amen. And you're one that stayed with the stuff. And we, uh, we just believe you're gonna be here when the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. steps back on this earth and <laughs> blesses you for this work you've done here. Amen. Thank you. I, I thank God for the great city harvest and the father of it, Kong He. Yeah who has been so strong in my life and strong in your life yes. and so many others. I always give honor to him anytime I can. The, uh, the time of being a, a Baptist uh, was, a, was a powerful time in my life. It, uh, we built a church in San Diego, not San Diego, uh, Denver. Denver. My first church, Mountain States Baptist Temple. Okay. It went from nine people in the basement to 2,600 in five wow. and a half years. Wow. Amazing. It was it's unbelievable, the most explosive growth for that period of time in any church in America. Mm. It was totally soul winning, soul winning, soul winning. Mm. Mm. And then I had some difficulties there, went out of the ministry for two and a half years, and then back into the ministry in San Diego mm. and pastored, uh, first started out Bible, first Bible Baptist Church of El Cajon. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And then I got filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and it was a, a stir. It was a stir. Here was this big time Baptist church, so winning church, and all of a sudden it was a charismatic church. It was a spirit filled church. 
And through that, I came into the life of Dr. Morris Cirillo. Yes. One of the greats of the faith. Yeah. Yeah. And he brought me first to Singapore. And uh, so that's where I met you. Yeah. But in my travels with Dr. Cirillo, uh, I came in the first time I went with him anywhere was to Abba, Nigeria. Mm. And in Abba, Nigeria, when I walked into that room and heard the preaching and saw the move of the Holy Ghost, I realized that I did not have that. Mm. I had information. Mm. I've always had plenty of information. Mm. I'm, I'm an information magnet. Mm. But uh, when those men were preaching, the stir of God was in the room. And when I got up and preached the first time, it was just dead. The whole mm -hmm. mood in the room changed. Mm. I was putting out information, but these people were having a hands-on experience mm -hmm. with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And so it drove me to my knees in my room, just mm -hmm. drove, man, I say drove me almost bluntly into the floor when I walked in the door and just, God, I must have what these men have. Mm. And uh, a second time at the pulpit, worse than the first, I just, <laughs> I just threw my hands up and said, uh, I have nothing for you, but I will have before I leave this city, I'm gonna have mm -hmm. power with God. Mm -hmm. And then the third night I was in the room at the window praying and it was a clear night and in Africa, the, it's, uh, the Milky Way is like you're in it. It's just like, it, it, it's so clear, no, no ground lights. And uh, I, uh, this was just after the Biafran War. Mm. And so there were still some skirmishes going on. And so as I sat there, as I was there praying and begging and calling out to God, I saw a light coming. And I thought, uh, someone shot a mortar at the building and I was just getting ready to cover. And the light just came into the room and just filled right to the right side of the window. And I just, it was, a, it was a unique light. It was the kind of light that was bright, but it wasn't one that turned you away, it turned you to it, you looked into mm. it. And all of a sudden the voice of God spoke to me out of that light and said, I'm going to give you a message mm. to the world on my plan for their finances. Mm. He didn't call it biblical economics. I've had some people say that God spoke that to me. That, that name came much later, but he said, a plan for the finances mm. of my people. Mm. And he went from one end of his desire to bless people financially, mm. and he opened some things to me. Like, hey there, before we dive deeper, I've got something really interesting to share with you about this channel. Take a look at this. This is the percentage of viewers versus those that have subscribed. Now, if you have found this video valuable or any of our content, we would really love your support. You can do that by hitting the subscribe button, and dropping us a comment below. Your support means the world to us. It fuels our ability to keep delivering to you valuable content and making each video better than the last. Thanks for being a part of this journey. Let's get back to the video. My job was not to get money from the people. My job as a minister was to get money to the people mm. and to bring that part of the message. And I was, a lot of it, I never heard it. You know, I didn't know the verses. Yeah. Uh, later on, I found out I knew most of the verses, but they had been given other meanings mm -hmm. or they had been looked over. But when I went back into the room and uh, that day went back to speak, I spoke with a power. Yeah. And that, and that same phenomenon that took place at City Harvest, yeah. when that money was coming pouring out of the balconies, yeah. uh, people were just, they, they went insane with, their, with the giving. Yeah. And uh, finally, uh, as it was going on, I heard the word, stop the giving. Mm. And I thought, stop, I never heard stop the giving. Yep. Dr. Cirillo had risen, risen up and stopped the offering. Wow. And said sufficient. Wow. And uh, from that, I went through the world uh, in a whirlwind at that time. I was for, for, for one whole year, I didn't have an off day. I was taken from one city to the wow. next city to the wow. next country. Yep. Never bought an airplane ticket, never bought a hotel room. Mm. And it was uh, 45 days in South Africa, sometimes three times a day preaching this message wow. across that nation. Wow. Through the world, through Asia, through Africa, all across Africa with yeah. the message. And um, when I started, uh, the, the strange thing about this message of biblical economics that yeah. I call it, 
is, you know, you usually think, well, okay, now I'm, I'm learning something and I'll write a book. And you get to thinking, well, how many books have been written on the subject? I didn't know of one book that was written on the yeah. subject of biblical economics and yep. what the Bible said about, now, the, it, it, there were some books that talked about tithing and how to get money from God's people. Yep. Mm. But uh, this was all about how to get money to God's mm. people. Mm. And so uh, at the end of this, this year, uh, up to now, I've written 52 books on yep. the subject of biblical economics. But now there are hundreds out there. Yeah. But the seed of it will all be found in those books because unique with Paul, and I, I, I didn't used to say this, but I'm old enough now that nobody can cause me any problem over yeah. it. <laughs> you can say what it's you want. It's just a truth. It's a <laughs> yeah. truth. Yeah. You know, the Apostle Paul said that he had a special revelation from God. Mm. He said he didn't learn it from the apostles. Mm. He didn't, he, he was, God, God brought him to the desert, mm -hmm. gave it to him in the desert. Yeah. And I have to say that no man taught me biblical economics. Yeah. God the Father taught it to me. Yeah. And in seasons of revelation, he started bringing so many truths to me, so many wonderful things. The seed, from the very beginning, the first thing he puts is this seed. Mm. Everything duplicates. Mm. Everything duplicates. Mm. I mean, this thing is, we were talking last night, uh, uh, even fire tries to duplicate. Wow. Mm. To true. replicate. Yep. Everything wants to replicate. Mm. It's, it's just... It's the rhythm of, of mm. what God what God created has in it wow. creation. Wow! Yeah. yeah. And so uh, uh, he said that uh, as we give, we would we would receive again, and and so uh, many places I found that in Scripture. But then one day I realized, wait a minute, he gave in Hebrews four. I mean in uh, uh, Mark four, he gave the word yep. seed power, mm -hmm. har seed seed power. Mm. He gave uh, the regular garden variety seeds, mm -hmm. but then it's where where was the other next place it was said? I couldn't find anywhere. And then all of a sudden, in one of the newer translations, Second Corinthians the ninth chapter, you find there that it speaks specifically of your money given mm. into the kingdom yep. of God yep. takes on seed power. Yep. Now watch this. Seed power is not harvest. Yep. Okay. A harvest never occurs without a man involved. Mm. There are no natural harvests. Mm. Wow. I mean, you can throw seed all <laughs> over the countryside and it'll be a big reproduction yep. and multiplication. Yep. But harvest is bringing that in. Mm. And then harvest even goes to cultivating what's there to force it into its best possible yield. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that is the thing that I think probably that I've brought in the table is the fact that the, the garden seed has a has a reproductive ability. The human seed has reproductive yep. ability. The animal kingdom, yep. all this reproductive thing is yep. everywhere. And then also finances. Yep given into the kingdom of God. Yep. God says it has, it's a seed. Mm. But now then you have to turn it into a harvest. Mm. Mm. And it brings me back to the words of uh, the last word, one of the last conversations I heard that uh, Dr. Uh, uh, the, the Bible College in Tulsa, uh, 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 Oral Roberts, Roberts, Oral Roberts yes. spoke. He said that this heartbreak mm. was how much harvest mm. God's children left in the fields Ooh. unharvested. Wow, wow. And it just struck me. Yeah. So I've been day and night everywhere, and you know, all over the world. Yep. Up until just the last few months, I'd go three weeks out, one weekend, three weeks out, one weekend, across the world teaching that God wants to prosper you. Yep. God doesn't want you to do without. Mm. Well, what kind of a rich father would want poor children? You know, if a rich father wanted poor children, it would actually be child abuse. Wow. And our God is not wow. guilty of child abuse. Yeah. So even as you watching here, everything can change in your life. The next program or two, we're gonna talk about things that will put finances in your hand if you can be a good steward of it mm -hmm. and put part of it back into the kingdom of God. 
forgive me for taking that moment, but I just... That was powerful. Okay, yeah, We're going to continue the discussion. We're going to break some more things down. We're here with Brother John, and I forgot to introduce you. Jason. Uh, Jason's been on the show before, and so uh, we have a, the next generation here, uh, Brother John's grandson, and he's he's taken this message, too, with purity. And so we're just going to continue to dialogue. And again, thank you for being here. Beautiful. We'll see you guys in the next episode.